What's going on guys? Apathetic here with all your tips, recommendations, and everything in between to make sure you are set up for success in the Crucible. And today we got a little competition going on. I'm going to be comparing a Tumint of Sky or Top Tree Dawnblade versus a Tumint of Flame or Bottom Tree Dawnblade and talking pros and cons of each, then getting into which one I would go for for my loadout in PvP. Let's get into it. Starting with the Tumint of Sky or Top Tree Dawnblade, it's important we go through the tree so we know what we are working with. So we have Wings of Sun, Engage Your Enemies, Mid Flight, Fire Weapons and Throw Grenades While Gliding. Next we have Icarus Dash which allows us to do a mid-air dodge and really is the highlight of this tree. Heat Rises, Airborne Kills, Recharge Your Grenade and Melee Energy. Casting Daybreak instantly refills all your ability energy. Swift Strike, strike an enemy with this melee ability to burn your target, temporarily increase your movement and reload speed, and boost your airborne weapon accuracy. Just looking at these traits, you can clearly see why Top Tree is named the Tumen of Sky since almost all of these traits revolve around being airborne. Getting into the pros of Top Tree, I think the first thing that comes to mind is Icarus dash this mid-air dodge can be very useful in a lot of scenarios you can use it to dodge these trolls using yotun it can be used to give you a little extra push to get around a corner when you have to escape from a bad scenario and you can also use it offensively to create misdirection with your opponents one of the favorite things i've done is icarus dash over someone's head and as they lose track of me then 360 shotgunning them which was a really cool play one other thing that is useful is using Icarus Dash when in your super. When popping Daybreak allows you to dash in mid-air, which you can use to dodge, of course, or dodge away from danger. Uh, basically uses you to get away from all these other guys that are team shotting you, because supers are not the juggernaut they were in the past. Another pro of this tree is the airborne accuracy that you have when aiming your weapons. So, yes. Uh, this is useful if you're gliding all over and just want to shoot people from the air if that's your thing But for me where I really notice the benefit of this is when warlock skating So when we're off so often when warlock skating you'll find enemies suddenly in front of you And maybe you'll try to take a shot mid skate and often it doesn't land with top tree down blade I found I was able to skate around a lot more freely and land shots mid skate more consistently now for a con with this subclass, and it does tie into the pros a little bit, is the fact that you do feel a little bit more floaty when using this tree. And because of this, it can make your skate feel a little less horizontal. And it's not by a huge amount, but I definitely noticed it. The other thing is if you're mid fight and for whatever reason trying to skate or skate into an engagement and you mess up your skate, you're just gonna flow a little extra, which may get you killed. But overall, I must say I was very impressed with Top Tree, especially considering I rarely ever played it in the past. I found a lot of utility in Icarus Dash inside and outside of Super and found it increased my survivability and ability to create misdirection with my opponents. Moving on to Bottom Tree Dawnblade or Attunement of Flame. And a lot has changed with this super as of late. It recently had the amount of super return nerfed, which essentially reduces the overall duration of the super. Getting into the traits of this tree, we have Faded for Flame, Daybreak Projectiles, Seek Targets as they travel, and upon impact launch a streak of deadly flames, Phoenix Dive, active while mid -air, uh, activate while midair to quickly descend and restore your health, while Daybreak is active, descend causing explosive damage. Everlasting Fire, killing an enemy with Daybreak extends its duration, and as I mentioned earlier, this is the specific perk that got nerfed. And lastly, Igniting Touch, strike an enemy with this melee ability to burn them and cause them to explode. So, as you may have noticed, Bottom Tree is very super centric, as two of the four perks revolve around the super, but with the changes to the super's duration and super damage resistance overall, is it still worth it? getting into the pros of this tree, and that's going to be the confidence of getting kills in your super. Because the blades have very aggressive tracking, I'm sure you guys have seen clips where people just throw the blade in the air and it kills someone across the map. Uh, and with the, or the fact that on impact it releases a streak of flames when you throw these blades, you pretty much know your chances of getting a kill or multiple kills are a lot higher. And it can be a lot more forgiving when it comes to how accurate we as a player need to be to land some of these kills. The next pro, of course, is the super duration. And while it is much shorter than it used to be, it's still going to have a longer duration than top tree as long as you're racking up those kills. 
Now moving on to a con for this tree, and that's the fact that there isn't really much of a neutral game to this tree. It's got your grenade, all your standard warlock stuff that you can find on any other tree, but it's all about kind of going all in for your super when using this tree. All right, so we've broken down both trees, and if you're still watching, thank you so much, because it's time I share which one I would personally choose for PvP. And in the past, if any of you watched my other Warlock videos, I always stood firm that bottom tree was the best tree for Dawnblade since the super was so strong, the damage resistance was so high, and you get so many kills with one super literally running from one spawn to the other. Fast forward to now, and supers have been reined in a ton, which is a good thing, but as a result, bottom tree has been a huge casualty. And with all that said, this tree revolves, bottom tree revolves around a super that has been nerfed in multiple ways. And because of that, that's going to make Icarus Dash or top tree, Attunement of Sky, the tree I would choose when I'm going in to PVP. You still get a very good super, but an even better neutral game that you can rely on versus having to rely on your super instead. So if you guys are trying to decide which tree to choose, both are good, but the most optimal tree, in my opinion, is going to be top tree or attunement of sky. But sound off in the comments what your favorite warlock subclass is right now. And if you guys agree with me, do you think top tree is now the superior subclass tree for Dawnblade, or did you always think that? With that, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe as it's a free way to support me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Your enemy is closing the gap. Jesus.